Wakefield showed their class. They showed that they really are a Super League side in waiting. Um, I don't think it was, you could say it was the, one of the best games of the year because I thought it was quite one-sided. I think to lose uh, didn't really turn up. They don't play as well away as they do at home and they you know they beat Wakey at home earlier in the year. Uh, but yeah, it was a good game, good coverage, good crowd. Yeah, yeah. Wakefield seem to be going in the, in the right direction, don't they? Well, I think... What I meant by excited, what I should have said was it was enjoyable. Yeah, it, it was, was a really enjoyable. enjoyable game. Yeah. There's like loads of little stories around the pitch. Max Jowett chasing that record. You know, Jermaine McGilvery in his final game. Luke Gale, Luke I believe, Gale's as well. Fa- yeah, know, it was his final game. His final yeah. game as well. And then, you know, I don't want to burst your bubble or anything like that, but the, even Jermaine McGilvery kicking a conversion at the end. It was just full of little stories and it was just brilliant to see. And, and Wakefield looking like a Super League outfit. Yeah, hundred percent. Look like so. Uh, the, the biggest thing for me was just the crowd. Um, when you pack a stadium like that, we I don't know how many was there. It was seven, eight thousand, something like that. It was pretty much full, wasn't it? Or it wasn't far from being full. And just when you get a full stadium like that, it gives the game a different atmosphere. And uh, yeah, I, the really it felt like you was watching a, a Super League team. I thought, and I've already said that, but yeah, very much felt like they're, they're a Super League club in waiting. Obviously, the result on the pitch didn't matter, although. A few extra IMG points there. Um, but yeah, it's all down to the grading, isn't it, which we're waiting for this week. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about the grading a little bit later on. Now, one of the things for me is obviously, in, in terms of like Sky coverage, they do have a bit of a monopoly on the coverage they have over Rugby League. Derek Bowman been very vocal about it in this past week. Yeah. Um, and it was great to see the sportsman providing what was good coverage. I mean, it wasn't at like Sky, Sky TV level, but it was good, you know. And and when I looked, it was like 20,000 people watching that on YouTube. Well, that's what you can do with a decent YouTube channel. I think, is is that the future of sports coverage? YouTube? I don't, I don't know. You, you, you love your YouTube, so I'll, <laughs> I'll hand that one over to you. Back to you. Well, I mean, the, the trend across all forms of media is that traditional style of media tv is dying is dying yeah, yeah like yeah, your yeah. new look at your news you know more people are jumping on youtube than than they are on on regular tv and netflix it's just you know it's just going nuts so perhaps that's where it is and and i think you know there was a story about the grand final we're breaking away from the the story of wake yeah, to lose here, but we'll, we'll there, get back to it there was a there was a remarks about the grand final saying that viewership was down and and, and it was as if rugby league was at fault and, and my take was no i don't think rugby league at fault i think it's the production companies that's at fault i think the coverage this year has been shocking on bbc and at times sky tv so you know i don't think it's necessarily a sport problem i think that's not the cause i think the cause is that the, the actual traditional media is is i think it's we're getting right on a little rant here aren't we yeah. so, so anyway you've just reminded me long answer, <laughs> long you've, answer you've, to you've just reminded me actually to cancel my tv license this week <laughs> exactly exactly you know without your rugby league you probably wouldn't have freaking sky tv because it's Dog crap. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's that. So back to Wakefield to lose <laughs> you, bloody. Uh, right, we've got to talk about Max Jowett. 500 points in a single season. World record, I believe. Um, Jones from Leeds, who currently had the record 1956-1957. Obviously, you knew that, Craig. Obviously. Being a stato. Uh, 496 points was the current record that he had to break. He's now smashed it with uh, 500 points. And I'll go through his stats. So he made 35 appearances this year. He's got 26 tries and 198 goals. Where, where's this guy been hiding? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's absolutely incredible. And I bet at the start of the season, he had no idea that he was going to go on this prolific point scoring uh, run. So, uh, and, and I can't see this being beaten for, for a long time. No, I had a look at some of the past players who'd sort of got, uh, close. got close. Like Andy Farrell, I think he was up in third. Uh, Henry Paul had a great season Pat Richards we, we all remember he, he I think he was like seventh on the list or something yeah so it's in re- really great list of names it's it sort of in that top 10 now he's been working for years so it's just good sort of story you know the backing play that's been with him for so many years and it is it, it's, you know the reaping the rewards are there yeah and I think for Wakefield you know th- this is very, very positive, isn't it? Like these, these are all foundations that the team, the club, can get behind and build on. Yeah, you know, heading into next year, we don't know yet, but it's likely they're going to get promoted to uh, the Super League. So, um, how, how much has Wakefield changed? I know that you can't. The whole thing doesn't revolve around. But as soon as they went and built that new stand, yeah, and I know they've got like new investment in the club. But as soon as they built that new stand, 
Yeah, everyone started looking at Wakefield in a different way. I mean, I did. I mean, if you can remember a few years back, I'd have, you know, a few laughs at Wake. You didn't have, you know, they've got great looking facility now. And as soon as they built that new stadium, there seemed to be a new air of positivity around the club. And before you know it, fans are backing it. They're backing the stadium. The, the revenue's going up and, yeah, the club's just going in the right direction. Yeah, I don't, I don't think just like building a new stadium is, is all you have to do. I think they've done a lot of obvious hard work all throughout the club, but it's definitely a big part yeah, of, yeah, of yeah. people like believing in you. You know, if you, if you turn up and you've got like a dog shit stadium and it's just, it's just a mess and it's falling down, people are like, oh, we're off to wherever. I don't want to, you, you <laughs> would probably slag a team off, but I won't, right? Okay, but if you get there and it's all brand new and you can see them making effort, then it's, they're all signs for the positive. And again, you, you can then attract more talent because they, players want to play there and you know sponsors like, start sponsors, turning sponsors, up yeah. investors so which, yeah definite which, change which is why again I'll sort of I kind of back up a little bit about with what IMG are doing so Stadia is one of the pillars of the IMG grading um, LED boards I know people take piss out of all this sort of stuff LED boards scoreboards media terraces all these things they want as minimum standards don't they and, and I still back it I think it's the right thing that they've done anything anything further to add on no, that no just uh, touch on Jermaine <laughs> McGilvery's oh yeah um conversion at the end it, it was a cracker wasn't it uh, somebody was it Luke Gale who described it as Frano Botticaresque <laughs> he, he literally just plonked it on the kicking tee didn't he was like two steps back oh, I'll just have a bit of a whack at this and oofed it and nailed it curled around yeah it was absolutely yeah it, it was at the moment of the match really I, I, I really well this is what I meant by like enjoyable like it was an enjoyable game to watch because of all these little stories you know and we love the French getting a bit of a battering as well so a, an amazing um, story to finish on and in a way an amazing way for him to finish his career yeah I'm so. I, I watching it on the TV and like and as he, as he kicked that goal I was like the missus was He's next to me. I was like going, yes! <laughs> I, was like, I was. I'm not a Wakefield fan. Why am I shouting for that? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it was great to see him finish off his career and what a great career he has had. It was a little bit sad what happened to him at Huddersfield. I think the... They did the dirty on him a little bit at the end of his career. They didn't kind of recognise him as they should. He's helped Wakefield back in the Super League. 